when Pastor called me yesterday morning and said he was sick, I asked the Lord, what do I bring today? And the Lord gave me a word, and it may just be for me, but I'm going to share it for you too. He does that a lot. He gives me a word that when I share, I find other people needed that same word. Yes. So I'm going to go to Daniel 1. Daniel, or no, Daniel 3, I'm sorry. Daniel 3. <coughs> and I'm going to read, pretty, it's going to be pretty lengthy to start, but I think we can get through it. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falls not down and worships shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sultry, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden calf, or image, I'm sorry. And whoso falls not down and worships, that he should be cast to the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded you. They serve not your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God who shall deliver you out of my hands? Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Oh, we have a God this morning, don't we? Amen. We have a God this morning. Yes. Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego has answered and said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not... Be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spoke and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. 
Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fire furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the fiery, burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, that means he was terrified, and rose up in haste and spoke and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spoke, and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, we pray today that you would bless the reading of your word and that you would open our hearts to receive what you have. Pray, Father, you would show us glorious and wonderful things that we've forgotten or don't know yet. We thank you that you are the living God that we can hide in. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The ancient city of Babylon was located about 50 miles south of modern-day Baghdad. Babylon was the religious and political capital of Babylonian. The decline of the Assyrian Empire enabled Nova Polizar, a Chaldean, to recover the city and found a new dynasty in 626 BC. His work of restoring the city was ably continued by his successors, especially his son, Nebuchadnezzar. King of Babylonia, and he boasted of this great city that he had rebuilt in Daniel 4, verse 30. He said, The king spoke and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? Nebuchadnezzar was not too many years past having a dream that Daniel interpreted. But it obviously lost some of the sizzle that he first saw. It is so easy in this world when we see a great move of God to get back into the daily re routine and forget the wonderful things that God had done. And that's easy for any one of us to do. Sometimes we need to take a walk through the pages of the Word of God and be reminded of what He did. Sometimes we have to look back in our own life. The psalmist said, when you get into a place, and I'm paraphrasing here, when you get into a place where things are hard, you're depressed, things are tough, look back at how you, He brought you through before. Because he's going to take you through again. Amen. I remember the first time I heard that and understood that. When I look back at everything the Lord has done for me, I know that I know he is capable 
of seeing me through until I get home. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of God that we have. Amen. Sure. It was to Babylon that the victorious Babylonian army brought the Jewish captives after the wars against Judah. The city was surrounded by an intricate system of double walls. The outer range covering about 15 miles strong and large enough for chariots to pass upon the top buttress by defense towers and it was pierced by eight gates. There was to the north a paved roadway about a half mile long, its walls decorated with enameled bricks. It showed 120 lions, which was a symbol of the god Ishtar, 575 dragons to Marduk, and bulls to the god Bel. They were all arranged in alternate rows. If we think about that city, it had everything that the world could give it at that time. And men can expend their last ounce of energy, their last ounce of gold, in building monuments, as Nebuchadnezzar said, to their own majesty. We see that happen in the world today. We don't have to look too far to see that man honors himself instead of God. Well. <clears throat> and what's worse with that is that other human beings, they're just captivated by it. And they honor that man too. We disregard the very creator of this universe, the very one who breathed out the stars. We, we disregard the one whose son came and walked in human form on this earth, hung on a cross, and died. We disregard that resurrection that took place and we disregard that he is coming again. Hallelujah. Boy, that's the Christian's promise. Yes, amen. Is. Every bit of it from start to finish is our promise this morning. We do not serve a God that cannot see. We do not serve a God that cannot hear. Our God never asks for babies to be laid in a foreign god's arms to be burnt by fire. That is not our God. Our God sent his son to take the penalty of this world's sin upon himself. Amen. And that's what makes our God stand out as the one true God against any other God that this world can come up with. What belongs to Jesus Christ needs to be given to Jesus Christ. We come into our story at a divinely appointed time. Why was this divinely appointed? This king built a golden image and erected it. And the reason why this is divinely appointed is because three men, despite the threat of being killed, refused to bow to a false god. Now, I love this story because we live in a day and age where there are so many false gods. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the gods of Buddhism or Taoism or Shintoism or Islam. We have the god of football. <laughs> yeah. We have the God of money. Amen. We have the God of self. Yes. I'm just not comfortable with that, so I'm going to do what I'm comfortable with. You ever, oh boy, I've said that before. 
There are so many gods out there, and the God of this world is going to supply the very one that you want to see. And when we allow Jesus Christ to move off the throne of our heart and allow another God to take it, we do something that is eternally against God's will in our life. These three men stood up and said, okay, you can throw us in. We're not going to serve your God. And our God is capable of keeping us. But if he doesn't, that's okay too. Because we're his. Amen. And in this day and age that we live in, it is going to become, and I think it already has started to become, why are we in the mess we're in? Because Christians back down. Mm -hmm. Why? I know why. We don't want to offend. Yeah. We don't want anybody to feel funny. We are living in this day and age where everybody's offended about everything. Amen. <laughs> yes, amen. Yeah. But when we have Jesus, we have the one true answer. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood who he was and what he did in their lives. And it is the same way for us. Sometimes we need to spend more time with Jesus. There is horror and shame in every form of idolatry. And when we replace Christ with something else on the throne of our heart, we commit idolatry. Even within the modern church, we need not look too far. And we can see man's worship of man rather than man's worship of God. This idol that was erected, his height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits and was proclaimed by six instruments of music. There is coming a day in the great tribulation where man will choose to serve the last king of Babylon as they served the first. This idol was set up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. This image being erected on the outskirts of the city, it is to be noted that in this place has been found a rectic rectilinear mound that is 25 feet high around an exact square of about 46 feet at the base resembling the pedestal of a huge statue. At a specific time when the music played everyone was to fall down and worship this image. It is no different today. Man will fall down and worship whatever God they choose. But the only God that is worthy of our worship is Jesus Christ. <laughs> Any worship within our heart that moves Christ off the throne becomes a false religion within us. The God of this world demands worship. When we serve even ourselves, we demand worship. It's a, God made us worshipful beings. We are going to worship something. So if we do not choose to worship God, the Creator, and His Son, Jesus Christ, then we leave room for worship of another kind, which will end sadly. The penalty for not falling down and worshiping this image was death by fire. Let's look at the reply of these three Hebrew children in verses 16 through 18. <clears throat> 
If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. They had purposed in their heart that they would serve God. They would serve the God. They would serve God Jehovah. We mustn't go through life without a purpose in our heart. If we allow life to dictate to us the things that we will believe, the things that we will accept, the things that we will worship, we will fall into this world's way of living. And our soul will not be at rest in the God that created it. But if we purpose in our hearts to serve the Lord God, then we've got solid ground to stand on. Our soul isn't going to flip-flap back and forth. We won't be as that paper cup in the wind. We might not always have the answers, but we know the one who does. And we can rest in that one. And I know all of you have been there. We don't have the answers. We don't understand why. But we know the one who does. And he offers much more than what this world can offer. They had purposed in their mind that they, what they would do. Do we purpose in our mind that we will serve Christ and him only, or do we compromise to fit in? Do we go along to get along? <laughs> One of the greatest failures that the modern church has adapted to is the philosophy that lowers our belief structure so that it can fit in. But God is who he says he is. And he wants us to take him at his word, to walk that out daily, and to allow him access to our life. Why? Because there's a lost world out there. He's interested in the lost. See, this is another thing no other God can do. These other gods can't be interested in the lost. They're not alive. That's right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Our God is interested in this world. He was interested enough to know that before the very foundations were laid, that he put, had to put a plan in place for lost mankind. He knew what was going to happen. And he proceeded with creation. And he said, when man walks away from us, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we will offer a redemption plan that is in the blood of Jesus Christ. And we have all been on the auction block for the enemy. And he abuses his followers. But when we accept Jesus Christ, he looks at us standing there and he says, that one's mine. That one is sealed by my blood. You can't have that one. Oh, I'm thankful today that no matter what happens, 
The enemy can't have me. I walk in this life just as you, and we all have times of, of great sadness. We all have times of defeat. We all have times of confusion. But when we put our hand in the hand of the one that we've taken as our Savior, He walks with us through it. Yeah. Do we purpose in our heart that we will serve God and God alone? Amen. This scene, if we could slip back in time, was full of pomp and ceremony. This was the greatest celebration being marred by these three who would not obey. If we could stand upon a hill overlooking the proceedings, one would have seen multiple thousands standing before this image in the plain of Dura. It would have been elaborate, as this was the mightiest city and the mightiest king on the face of the earth at that time. I am sure he would have taken a place close to that image so that he could watch it. With all the attention of royalty and with every effort made to make this the greatest time and moment of celebration the world has ever known, the announcement was given most likely in several languages to fall down and worship the golden image. The words are clear, sharp, and concise. If such is not done, he will be cast into the midst of a burning fire furnace. These three Hebrews had purposed in their heart what they would do. As the old saying goes, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for anything. Amen. Yeah. That's right. So how did this story end? Well, their God was able to deliver them. Amen. Yes. They did not choose the outcome. They chose the source. They went into that fiery furnace and the Lord went with them. They had their faith rooted and grounded in the very one that could keep them through it or take them past it. There was no doubt in their minds that the choice they made was the right one. We don't choose the outcome either. We choose the source who has all the outcomes in his hands. Amen. How much weight gets taken off our shoulders when we say, I choose Jesus. I choose his way. Live or die, I choose him. We are confident and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. So come what may, whether he keeps me here or takes me there, I have Jesus. Yes. Yes. And that's what we have this morning. We will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 8 through 10. Do we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the choice we make is the right one? Purposing in our hearts that it is only Jesus and none other. Taking a stand, whether it be at school, work, home, in the grocery store, even where we worship, where we dine. The list can go on. To purpose to cling to Jesus regardless of the cost, regardless of whether others will follow, we will still go. Leave the world behind and give us Jesus. What will our ending be? I'm going to read to you our ending as we choose him. I'm going to go to Revelation 21. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, 
and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things, are passed away. And he who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him who is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Praise God. That's our ending, folks. That's, it. That's our ending. Yes. We hold on to the hand, Amen. even when all hell is breaking loose. <coughs> we hold on to the hand that went into hell and preached and then rose back up. And because he rose, we know that we will rise again, too. Yay. He had to do it that way. How would we have known we could be resurrected if he hadn't been resurrected? Amen. See, he sees to the finest details. Remember this. I heard this some time ago from a pastor, and it has meant so much to me. If the enemy could write our epitaph, we'd be dead already. <clears throat> he likes to threaten us. He likes to scare us. And he uses one of a zillion ways. He knows, he knows our weaknesses. You know? But if he could put us in the grave, we'd already be there. It is only God that has life and death in his hands. <clears throat> so I encourage you all today, and I encourage myself, as we start a new year, as things don't look overly positive in our political realm, in our nation, around the world, what's taking place, Let's not let go of that hand that overcame this world. Let's keep our faith in him, and let's purpose in our hearts who we will serve. Joshua says, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Sometimes we just need to stay the course, folks. We might not have the answers, and we might not know what's going to happen, but let's stay the course. We're all on this journey together. Amen. And we're going to get there all the same way, and that's through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's through Jesus Christ that we're going to be kept. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father, I am so grateful this morning that as we gather, you did not have us come to you and put our faith in you and then walk away. But you have stayed and you've granted us your Holy Spirit to guide us, to comfort us, to correct us, to show us the way. You are not a God that's dead and you are not a God that cannot hear or see what's going on in our lives. I pray that throughout this new year we would be determined to purpose in our heart to serve you. 
We invite you into our lives. We ask you to grow us, to change us, to make us ever more ready for your kingdom. Knowing that until we get there, we will continue to grow. Bless each person here this morning. Be, without, be with them throughout this coming week. As your spirit opens doors, may we take that stand and allow your light to shine through us. <clears throat> Guide us and direct us, and once again we ask that you would be with our pastor and heal him up in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for all you do for us and for the gift of your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Thank you for being here. You have a blessed week.